Sob Rock has reignited my love for 80s guitar parts and guitar tones and that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate for you guys in today's video. We're not going to take a look at any specific songs from that album because I'm sure that's been done to death already at this point, but I am going to demonstrate some 80s influenced guitar parts and tones that are reminiscent of that 80s soft rock sound from the likes of, you know, Don Henley, Phil Collins and Toto, you know, the list goes on. So we've got four types of guitar part that we're gonna look at today, each with a different tone. And these are single note staccato riffs, double stop dyads, nylon string textures, and epic 80s lead sounds. All of the tones that I've used to play these parts with were recorded with just the one guitar, the Strat that I'm holding here, and one plugin, that being the Archetype Tim Henson from Neural DSP, who are the sponsor of today's video. So as I go over each individual part, I'll talk about the presets that I've created and why I thought that this plugin would be a good fit for an 80s throwback video because, you know, let's be real, a signature Tim Henson plugin, you know, the guy from Polyphia, that's not exactly my style of guitar playing. So I was a bit apprehensive about um, doing a sponsored video with this plugin, but as soon as I plugged into it and experimented with some of the effects and the amps that, that you have with this plugin, I knew that it would be the perfect fit for a video like this. And just so you guys are aware, you can download all of my presets that I'm using in this video for free via the link in the description box. Let's get started with single note staccato riffs. This is a guitar part that will add a nice percussive texture to your tracks and one that will gel well with a good bass line. So for example, here is the bass line that I wrote for the intro track on its own. Now you're gonna hear me add in a single note staccato riff played on the low E and A strings that follows that bass line very closely. When you hear guitar parts like that, they won't always be following the bass line. That's just something that you can do. It is an option. Sometimes they'll be acting more as a, a decorative melodic part. And there's plenty of examples in this in the song New Light, actually. But the main thing to take note of here when you're writing riffs like this is that to get the desired effect, you have to be selectively palm muting the notes because if you leave them open, it won't sound right. You need to palm mute to get that nice snappy staccato percussive sound. <laughs> And in terms of appropriate tones for a guitar part like this, I'm using position two on the five-way selector switch on my Strat. I feel like positions two and four on a Strat are just gold when it comes to 80s guitar tones. And that's, you know, to be honest, what I used for most of the tones that you hear in this video. The preset that I've put together for this guitar part using the Archetype Tim Henson plugin is using the Acoustic Simulator Head, which as you will hear later on in the video, does a great job at getting nice acoustic sounds out of an electric guitar. But I've also found that it's good for getting tones that sound like a DI guitar track, which is what a lot of players in the 80s and 90s would do to get crystal clear clean tones. Instead of using an amp, they would plug in direct. So on this amp head, you have a blend control, which I, for this preset, have, have it set just up by a quarter or so. But if I turned that all the way up, it would be all acoustic simulation, but having it only dialed in a little bit like I have for this preset allows me to get something that's closer to, well, like I said, a DI guitar tone. And it also actually reminds me of if you've ever used a guitar with a piezo pickup, it reminds me of blending in a piezo pickup 
with humbuckers or single coils to get a mix of acoustic and electric clean tones. I'm also running the compressor and chorus pedals. The compressor ensures that my playing dynamics stay very level and that none of my notes really get lost in the mix. And chorus, it goes without saying, but it's just so synonymous with the sound of 80s guitar playing. <laughs> Moving on to the next 80s inspired guitar part, double stop dyads. Here's what they sound like. You'll hear examples of parts like this in the song Last Train Home. And it's another classic sound when it comes to 80s soft rock guitar parts. So this track that I've created for the intro, it's in the key of B minor and the progression moves from A major to B minor to G major. And rather than playing triads for all of those chords, which are three note chords, which we can sound like this. I'm instead playing dyads which is just the root and third in each chord. So I'm leaving out the fifth. So I'm playing some pal muted rhythmic parts using those dyads. Now in terms of tone, I've double tracked this part. So one of the tracks is using position four on the strat, the other is using position two. And I've hard panned them left and right to get a bit more of a, well, a wider sound. And the preset for this one uses the clean amp head in Archetype Tim Henson. And on the cab, I've got my favorite mic combination, which is a ribbon mic and a 57, both of them set quite far away from the center of the speaker cones. Again, I am using the compressor, which helps to keep things nice and tight. I'm also using the chorus and reverb this time with the decay set quite high. Now, a part like this could also work really well with no reverb at all, but I think I prefer the way that it sounds with a large reverb in the context of this track. I did consider using the acoustic simulator head for this part as well, but there's quite a lot of clean tracks going on here and I wanted to have some variation in terms of tone. So instead, I'm using the clean amp head for this. So if you wanna create similar sounding guitar parts for your own songs, but you don't know triads all across the fretboard, Here's a quick tip for finding dyads across the fretboard with ease. So major and minor bar chords with the root note on the root notes on the sixth string like this. To get dyads, all you need to do is in each of those chords play just the notes on the middle two strings, so the D and G strings in this case. That's what you'd have for the A major. And for the B minor. And for the G major. You could also do that with bar chords that have the root on the fifth string. Only this time, the dyads would be found on the G and B strings. However, if you have this plugin, there's another way to play guitar parts like this, and that's to use the multi-voicer to harmonize your lines. So this is a part of the Tim Henson signature plugin that allows you to add up to four different harmonies on top of the single notes that you're playing on your guitar. So for example, I've set it so it's gonna harmonize at thirds in B minor. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, whilst I wouldn't necessarily use a harmonizer to play parts like the one that I just demonstrated for you using those double stop dyads because it's easy enough to play those two notes at once for a part that's fairly simple like that, I will say that it is good for harmonizing lines that are a bit more melodically complex that would be a real challenge to harmonize yourself in real time. For example, here's a clip of me playing that double stop dyad part, well, at least a version of it that is a bit similar, but as I said, a bit more melodically complex and listen to how the multi-voicer takes care of the harmonies for me. Now I've mentioned the word textures already in this video and this next guitar part we're gonna look at does a great job of adding some nice texture to an 80s themed soft rock tune and that is nylon string acoustic parts. So the B section in that intro track is based around this progression. <laughs> And for the tracks where I'm playing those double stop dyads that we just went over earlier on, I played exactly that. I played that part the way that I just played it for you, but using the preset that I used for those double stop dyads. But when I recorded that, I thought, there's something missing here. I need something different in terms of texture. And so I had to think about other guitar parts that I'd heard on the Saw Brock album that could possibly be that missing thing that I was looking for. And that's when I realized there's a lot of nylon string acoustic parts on the Sob Rock album. Perhaps most notably would be the song, Why You Know Love Me, which goes like this. <laughs> So now we're gonna to listen to the B section from that track without and then with those nylon string acoustic tracks added in so that you can hear what it is that they are actually adding to the mix. So as you could just see in here, I am playing the exact same part um, as I did uh, on the tracks where I'm playing those double stop dyads with the clean amp. Um, it's just that for this particular tone, I am using the neck pickup on the Strat paired with the acoustic simulator head. I'm using that head again, but this time with the blend control all the way up so that I'm getting maximum acoustic simulation. And I've also drenched this preset in reverb so that it sounds nice and dreamy. Now, if I wanted to get more of a steel string acoustic sound, I would be more inclined to use the bridge pickup on my Strat. <laughs> But nylon string acoustics have more of a round glassy tone to them. So that's why I'm using the neck pickup on the strap paired with this acoustic simulator. <laughs> The last 80s inspired guitar part and tone that we're going to look at today is epic 80s leads. Big saturated lead tones drenched in reverb and chorus, that's the tone that you want to chase for when you're playing lead melodies that could work well in song intros and solos as well. So for example, here's what I played in the intro track.
leave a comment below if you can name the 80s song that I ripped that melody from. Of course the song Last Train Home is full of these melodic lead fills. And Boys of Summer by Don Henley, that's another track that comes to mind for me when I think about guitar parts like this. They're not exactly full-on solos, more just little melodies that can add to the song. Now, I did actually play a full solo using this kind of tone in the intro track, and so if you want to get the tab for that, as well as the tab for everything that I've played in that same intro track, you can get access to that at bulletproofguitarplayer.com if you are a paying member. If you're interested in signing up, the link is in the description box beneath the video. So the preset that I've created for these lead parts, it's using the crunch slash lead head and cab. I'm using the overdrive pedal with the gain set really low for just a very slight boost. I'm also using the compressor. Of course, I'm using chorus and a nice bit of reverb as well. <laughs> So in terms of writing guitar parts like that, well this track is in B minor and both the, the melodies that I played in the intro as well as the solo uh, are based around the B natural minor scale. And in both examples, you know, the part that I played in the intro as well as the solo, I am really targeting the, I find myself targeting the ninths or major seconds, whatever you want to call them in that scale, these notes here. <laughs> the second note in the B natural minor scale. For whatever reason, that note just helps to create really nice melodies over minor chord progressions. So try incorporating ninths or major seconds into your melodies if you're writing 80s influenced music in a minor key. And you wanna try and write short, memorable melodies that you could perhaps repeat in different octaves as a way of, of developing it. For example, something like this. So single notes, staccato lines, double stop dyads, nylon string, acoustic parts, and epic 80s lead tones. These are all sounds that are reminiscent of 80s soft rock music and shout out to John Mayer for bringing those sounds back to present day music. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one.